Hello, America. I'm Tom Han, the creator of Americana Corner. And I'm Owen Lanier, the creator of the Civil War Files. And welcome to Founding Families, where we spotlight different families in American history. And today we're focusing on the Lee family of Virginia, who first came to America in 1639 when Richard Lee I made his way over here from England. And he arrived almost destitute. But by the time he died in 1668, he was the wealthiest man of Virginia, mostly from planting tobacco. Over the succeeding generations, his family prospered even more. And by the time his great-grandson, Richard Henry Lee, was born, the family was one of the wealthiest and most prominent in the colony. Uh, Owen, do you have a favorite uh, Lee in your uh, repertoire there? I think my favorite, most fascinating Lee, is definitely Robert Edward Lee, but all the people in the middle are just as interesting. Yeah, the Lee family really was significant from the founding era all the way through the, the Civil War. And Richard Henry Lee's an interesting guy. Richard Henry Lee introduced the Lee Resolutions in June of 1776 at the Second Continental Congress. And that resolution is the resolution that called for the separation from England. It was a resolution that was passed on July 2nd, which caused John Adams to remark that July 2nd would be the greatest day in American history, not July 4th when the declaration was announced. Thomas Jefferson's Declaration of Independence was really almost an explanation of the Lee Resolution. And uh, like George Washington, he had very little to gain by the American Revolution. And yet, like George Washington, he sided with the rebels. Uh, pretty remarkable when you think about it. Anyway, Richard Henry Lee had a lot to lose, took his chances, and you have to admire that sort of heroism, I think. Absolutely. And I agree with you 100%. He had a cousin at the same time, also prominent in the American Revolution. And his name was Henry Lee III, better known to us as Light Horse Harry Lee. I think he was the father of General Lee, your, your favorite guy. And he was um, one of the great cavalry leaders of the American Revolution. And then, of course, his son, Robert E. Lee, uh, kind of grew up with a bit of a stigma, would you say, Owen? I would say yeah. so. Robert E. Lee's early life was spent kind of living in the shadow of his father. His father, Light Horse Harry Lee, had financial problems, putting the Lees into a kind of middle-class position in society when, before the revolution, they had belonged to the top of the top. Robert E. Lee had no hope of going to a college. His mother just did not have the money for it. So he signed on to the United States Military Academy at West Point to get a free education and join the military, which Lee probably saw as his escape from the doldrums of a middle-class lifestyle. He became super important. He was an engineer after all, and he worked on projects like Fort Pulaski and Savannah. He helped build Fort Monroe at the tip end of the Virginia Peninsula, ironically becoming one of the most strongest held Union outposts in the entire American South. He even surveyed the southern border of the state of Michigan. Although he was one of the most successful Union soldiers in peacetime, he would become the United States military's greatest adversary during the American Civil War. Obviously, we know, or you might recall, a lot of Lee's military service. He fought on the peninsula, he fought at Second Manassas, and ultimately his most famous battle at Gettysburg. But what I think defines Lee as a great man is not his war fighting abilities, but rather his ability to look at the American Civil War coming to a close and realizing that the game was up. He peacefully surrendered his army at Appomattox Courthouse, allowing quick reunification of the American sides after a deadly civil war, something almost unheard of in military history. And most of it was thanks to Robert E. Lee telling his soldiers to go home and make good citizens instead of taking up rifles to fight an insurgency. I was just going to say, yeah, you're right. People don't talk about that too much anymore. He gets caught up in all the more modern thoughts on, on uh, General Lee. But his uh, advocacy for a, a peaceful transition back into the United States of America is really one of his, I think, more uh, momentous decisions that he made. And the founding era uh, guys, uh, Richard Henry Lee, Francis Lightfoot Lee, 
uh, Light Horse Harry Lee. These guys helped to shape our country when it needed shaping and, and helped us to, to break away from the, the monarchy in, in England. And I don't know if we talk about that enough. Richard Henry Lee is one of those forgotten founders, I think. But he was a man of tremendous conviction, like his, his cousin, Robert E. Lee, a man of great conviction. And I wonder if that's one of the, the, the family traits you find in the, in the Lee family dynasty. Uh, Richard Henry Lee risked it all, uh, his wealth, his power. He was uh, elected to uh, the Virginia House of Burgesses. And he stood to lose a lot by rebelling against the greatest power in the world. And yet, because he felt that it was the right thing to do, morally, ethically, whatever, he did so. And Robert E. Lee, well, you know, he, he gave up the chance to command the Union Army and win the war. I think you and I would agree that those are some of the most important men in American history. <laughs> yeah. And Robert E. Lee has a different bill of sale. He's somewhat controversial. He's either a messiah figure or he is the devil. And I think if some if people will take a more middle of the road approach and see him as a complicated man who can tell plenty of lessons, I think we're on the right path with his memory. Well, it is. And so this founding family, the Lee family of Virginia, is one of those families that through multiple generations helped to create and shape this great country in which we live in. I think we have to remember families like that that were there for us at the beginning. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Owen. This has been great. I really appreciate your thoughts. And thank you to everyone for watching us. And until next time, may your love of country lead you.